G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to part 3 of building my units, my cabinets, shelves for my hiking and camping gear. I'm going to show you in a minute is over the weekend I spent a little bit of time just potting around. Didn't have much time so it was just a little bit here, a little bit there. But what I'm going to show you, I'm going to put a bit of voice over on, is running the conduit from the power point down the bottom here if you can see to that point so now I've got power running to this and like I said in the previous video all that really is is an extension cord with a double socket on the end so I'll get the camera I'll show you where it starts quickly show you what got done uh, after do cutting all the conduit to size, I started threading the uh, power cable through. <laughs> one piece at a time, one piece of conduit, run down into place, next piece run down into place. Because with it only being a 20mm conduit, it wouldn't go down, it wouldn't move around the corners, no matter what I tried to do, even on the shorter pieces. So it was one piece at a time, until I got it all the way up to the power point. Let you know now the amount of times I dropped the screw and I was swearing or I slipped and hit my thumb and finger doing this. <laughs> it was a lot more than I got it right. But I cut all the swear words out, I cut all the business out and messing around. But the whole idea of this was just to make running the cable from the power point in the wall up to the uh, socket where I'll be storing the cameras on the side there of the smaller counter just make it safer so if anything was to go back there and hit it, it the actual cable would be protected there'd be less chance of I don't know if we ever get a mouse or a rat getting here or anything uh, chewing through the cable apart from where the plug is which I'm thinking about actually uh, boxing off over the top so it's going to need a clip or uh, a little latch to get in and out none of this has actually been uh, finished off properly yet. it's just putting it in and measuring it all up and none of it went to waste I think I've got about three inches left of the actual piping I was using here after finishing uh, the whole lot I've got a bit of piping behind me too but it's a lot more difficult getting down into these small spaces and these small gaps to get this done now this one I'm just marking off where I'm going to drill out or cut out part of the piece of wood that goes across which is part of the original shell frame I picked up um, from Sam Spares when they moved into the warehouse they're using now. So it's just recycled uh, wood and gear. Now not the best of occupational health and safety here, no clamp, just bending over on a plastic tub uh, to cut it. I counted all my fingers, I got all eight fingers and two thumbs left with no cuts, so everything was okay. All the ends, you'll see the little pieces there. I actually cleaned all of those off before I threaded any of the cables through. So it was all sanded, all smooth, there was no sharp edges on it, no pieces, no splinters. Uh, that was just the... Um, pedantic side of me, I just wanted it done right and make it a lot easier. Now I measured up here allowing for a bit of play room at the end to cut bits off. The amount of times I bumped my head getting in and out, I don't know, you just saw then I bumped it getting in, it was a bit of a nightmare. And this end I tried hitting it but it was just offline to get it in the actual pipe clip to hold it in place so I should have just done this straight away in the very beginning just pushed it up and held it at the same time now this part here is not, none of these joints even after I've finished putting the cables through none of them have been glued they're all just pushed on there's about a 20 mil allowance to get them all the way in there and it's nice and secure so but this means that I can get under there when I come to put the soundproofing behind here and the panel in I can, I'll have room to get behind it and, and do that. The actual two, uh, one of the clips on the left hand one, 
I think I'm going to have to move or even just turn it around straight into the panel with the soundproofing behind to hold that in place but that's not going to mean much and here we are this is where I'm finishing off doing the videos I carried on running the actual from this angle I could put on there the little elbow to take it up and then another elbow to bring it back down with another elbow to take it into the box behind the actual sockets I installed in the woodwork on the counter side so that's where it started let's get a bit closer this one here to show you from the side I haven't changed the plug on this one this was an old power cord I just cut it off at the other end and ran it through and wired it in but this is the one I did uh, over the weekend it's not as wide it's not sticking out as far and if it gets knocked the cable is out the way so it's a lot safer so what I am going to do is I'm going to cut this and put another one of these plugs on so the wire can run similar to this where it's a lot flusher or nearer to the wall so it's a lot safer less chance of getting caught on anything another section I got done was that's where the <coughs> excuse me where my backpacks are going and the under quilts I got this panel put in and I got some soundproofing put on the back that's that black stuff now it's not going to stop the sound 100% but it's going to reduce it a lot that soundproofing now I'm going to do the same here panel list with soundproofing on the back and just to give it a little bit more is the wall behind I'm going to panel that and put soundproofing in between the panel and the wall because on that side is where the television is and it it is loud when it comes into this room so the more soundproofing I can get to dead on that the better for me again there we've got another room through there where the granddaughter stays so that wall there now I've decided I'm going to soundproof all that wall so when she's on her little iPad thing talking to her mates they get excited and squeal what else did I get done? All right, let's show you. you can see where the conduit came through from the uh, PowerPoint it's gone up there <coughs> excuse me and then it's come across here and underneath this it goes into this box off area it comes up and straight into the um, PowerPoint box I put a box on there to protect it but the conduit goes all the way in and I've actually soundproofed behind here this is going to have panel input on and soundproofing all the way up because it's all part of that same wall the, the two same walls <coughs> paneling got done on the inside I adjusted these had to make it about 12 mil smaller for it to fit with the uh, Tongan groove same as this one I had to make it a little bit smaller and put another block of wood in there just to give it more strength but that, that's fine <coughs> excuse me again but that's that power point <coughs> means I've got power over here and thinking now looking around and going through things I'm thinking about putting my cameras and my camera gear here because I've got spaces I could just put my uh, batteries and things on this one shelf there should be enough room this bar is coming out so I'm going to have a small shelf at the top and like I said this bar is coming out and there's going to be a shelf on here and that's going to be things like for my jet boil so they can actually stand up there in there and I'm thinking at the top I should be able to get the gas canisters in the top piece here so that that would be my little stove area and gas. It's like I got the sewing machine and the cotton and everything that goes there for the sewing machine and bits and bobs. <clears throat> so I'm slowly sorting it and organising it in my head. The next thing I want to get done today is put that top shelf on or 2.4 metres down to the corner. And then what that will enable me to do is move some of this stuff put it over onto that shelving and if I'm lucky I might be able to 
uh, make room for this just so I can get that tongue and groove out and continue in there because I want to get this done first for all my packs instead of having them all piled up in the way I've got a couple over there so all this stuff has got to be organized put on the shelves put in the shelves put in the cupboard and I am in two minds tell me what you think is these top sections here instead of having a a door on them and having to get my arm in and get down I was thinking about building drawers because I've got one two three four going all the way across so put, put it on runners pull it out and put it back okay I've got the two pieces of wood here for the shelving up to get that done uh, I'm just going to put them up there see if they're short enough or long enough they are supposed to be 2.4 meters the same as that but we'll make sure and if I have to I'll take it outside and just trim it down and then I'll get the screwdriver and screw them in place I do have a piece of wood sticking up here which while well, I've got no shelves I'll, I'll cut that off trim ready so that won't be in the way when I put the long length along here just been out into the shed to get my saw and the roof has collapsed, a neighbour's tree, the branches are forced it and it's just buckled on itself and when we had the storms it's gone in and I think it's ruined a lot of my power tools. Oh well, shit happens as they say. Pisses me off but yeah. Second one. I think I do have to go, as well as the step ladders. <laughs> I'm a short ass, I can't reach. I can, but it's going to be dangerous. So, so get, get the other step ladders. <laughs> Found them. This wood is warped a bit, but as I'm screwing it down, it's flexible enough to twist. That'd be 90% level, I'd say.
stuff. Cute. Ah, that's the screws in. Just about two in the far corner. But I'll do it then when I do the main stretch. At least now I can get stuff up here and make room over there to get what I need out to do in here. should be okay up there. Fill the gaps up in that one. tents on Black Wolf. This is a isopod which is a four season and it weighs in at 3.2 kilos. We've got here uh, the Recom one man tent from Miltech. Uh, I'll get around to getting it out and doing a review of it. Uh, it's that sh shelf empty across there now. So let's take a few pieces of tongue and groove on that one and then I'll measure them up and panel this inside a bit and then start down here. Because if I do this panel bit here first, that means the whole of this side of this wall is complete. Then it's just down the other end, which I'm going to replace with the same wood as I've been using for the shelves here. So it gives it a nice rustic look. More of a outdoorsy look instead of having this tongue and groove in plain view. And don't like it. Don't like it. Fills a gap, but that's all it does. I think that'll be the end of today's episode. So what we've got done, we've got the panel on the inside done there for where we're thinking about putting the drawers. We've got most of the opposite side with uh, soundproofing done. So we've only got a small amount of soundproofing to do, which is from here to the back on this side. That's <sighs> right. Yeah, we've got all this cleared so we could use the tongue and groove. We've got the shelf put up. Moved everything out of there so we could get to the tongue and groove and put it up on the top. Now the only two real heavy duty shelves that need to be done are these up here. Now, when it come to do this one here, I'm going to have to take these out, no weight on them, but they do bow a bit, that's how they were when I got them. So I'll be pushing it up and drilling that one back in, they're saying there, and I may even be able to get to push that one a little bit higher, just to level it off more. But I don't want to put too much pressure on the top pulling it down, so I may just leave that one. But take these off, put the shelves in there through to the back, I might do them in two pieces, first up to here and then the second one down into the corner 
Uh, then the top one I could just put that straight over on the top and that will be done in two, two pieces I say, two lengths. So there's going to be eight pieces on that one and eight pieces on the top one to make it fit. Uh, fit. And the actual shelves there will be finished. And then all we'll need to do on them shelves is the little bits of panelling on the back with soundproofing. And I'm thinking about just using some uh, 7mm ply to go along there. Because I don't want anything too thick. So, so what's that going to be? It's going to be 7mm. So we'll lose about 17mm or to it. No, about 26 mil altogether because I'm going to fix it on the actual frame that's there now and run some beading along the back to hold it in place and I'll do the same on that one and then that just leaves it, without doing all the doors and drawers the uh, that wall there at the back underneath for all the shelves down the bottom and that'll be marine ply shelves, the seven mil because nothing seriously heavy is going on there. And again, the marine ply with the soundproofing as the back wall, just to bring the noise down. And the bottom shelf, I don't know if you can see it there. It's behind the step ladders. Sorry about that. <coughs> the bottom shelf, that's a special one that is. At the moment, I have three boxes like that in my office taking up space <laughs> for Puss Puss the cat. I'm going to turn that into a little play thing for him so he can go in there, put a bed in there if he wants to use that one. He actually loves using the box by the window where he can curl up and look through the blinds and watch outside. So that box will remain. But these two bigger ones I've got, they'll, they'll be out. It'll probably give me, what's that? Probably a square meter of space back in the room. But they're going to be doors on two parts of it and half a door near there and the little archway for him to come in and out. I may even put a little, little window in it so I can watch from there. Okay, that's today's video. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, and you're not a subscriber, go down below, click on the subscribe button, click on the notification bell next to it and select all, so you can be notified of all future videos. Click the thumbs up button, the like button. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much.